Okay, awesome. So I love the chance just to be face to face and engage around just the basics of the business. And so we're going to do a four class series. This is class one, so it's kind of nice. Um, you don't have to go in order, but there is a method to the madness, so it's kind of nice when you go in order. But um, tonight is um, mainly covering money, making sure how does the money get managed, taxes, and this is a great time of year because we're coming up on the end of the tax year, um, and then a little bit of the emotional side and organizational side of running a business, especially Mary Kay business. So um, I'll kind of cover a topic and you can ask questions along the way, or I'll try to ask at the end of each piece and um, feel free to express if you're like, huh, <laughs> what was that? And we can go deeper into something. So um, the first thing I want to talk about is just the basic um, having a Mary Kay business in your home. How does that work tax wise, money wise, all of that? And then we'll build on it. So your home is now your business because you work from home. So a portion of all your expenses for your home, um, even a portion of your mortgage can be a write-off or rent um, because it's where you're running your business. So that's awesome. And what you really want to do is have a designated Mary Kay space. It doesn't have to be its own room, but just a space that's kind of like, okay, this is like my home my Mary Kay business home. Um, if you have a desk, oh, I need you to be quiet, okay? Be quiet. All right, if you um, have a room that doesn't have a bed in it and it's not a bathroom or a kitchen, um, you can say, this is my office. And that's great. If you can take the whole room and even if it's shared space with other stuff, um, the main thing is um, you want to get as much square footage as you can to count for your Mary Kay business, but it just, it can't be another main thing like a living room can't double as your office. Does that make sense? Okay. So um, like when I first started, I was in a two bedroom apartment. So our second bedroom was, there was a bed and storage and my desk. So I could just do a portion of my room. And if your desk is kind of your central space and then you can do three feet on either side and then six feet out from behind, it's kind of just that swath of space. And um, you can also count the path from your front door to your office space three feet wide, because that's personal space. And then you can also count any storage. So if you have storage in your home, in a closet or something, that all counts. And so your home and your car are gonna be the two biggest tax deductions you're gonna get. And as a Mary Kay girl, you should be getting a pretty sizable discount or um, deduction on your taxes because of having a business of your own. So um, figure out your, square footage of your Mary Kay workspace and then um, uh, have kind of that designated area. You don't have to sit at the desk, but just that space that's going to be for your, your work. And then um, on the car side, your miles are going to be your largest tax deductions and it's like 50 cents a mile. So even a two mile trip to the post office, that's a couple bucks that you're getting back. So um, it's a good idea just to have a little notebook in your car. There are apps and different things, but man, nothing beats writing it on a piece of paper. <laughs> you know, I know I did it. I don't forget. Well, I know if I forgot, um, but some way, if you can just have the um, date, how many miles you drove and what you were doing as it relates to your Mary Kay business. So if you're making a delivery, that's a round trip tax deduction. If you're going to Walmart and you're buying stuff for your Mary Kay business, even if you're buying other stuff, as long as you have a separate receipt just for your Mary Kay stuff, it's a tax deduction, round trip. 
Um, if you go to church and you deliver products to someone at church, that counts as a tax deduction. The only thing that you can't double up on is mileage to work. So if you are going to work, you're getting paid. Um, you're not going to get any miles to write off until you clock out for the day and head home. Does that make sense? So um, trips after work, good to go, just not trips to work. Um, and then other than that, if it's Mary Kay related of any kind, even a facial or you're giving someone samples or anything, that all counts. So you just want to tally up your miles for each year. So um, when December 31st comes, uh, if you've been tracking them up to, to now, you'll get an ending mileage for your car. And you'll say, okay, my car has 24,792 miles on it. Boom. Then starting in January, you're tracking your miles just anytime you drive. And let's say you get to the next December 31st and now your car has 35,792 miles. So you drove 10,000 miles. What you're gonna find out is, okay, how many of those miles were Mary Kay? And that's why you're tracking all those trips. So you just know, okay, I drove a total of 400 miles out of my 10,000 that I drove. And that's kind of the percentage that they will count you for. Does that make sense? Is that coming through? Okay. Um, so keeping your miles is huge tax deduction. And then you'll also want to keep all receipts for your car expenses, a repair, oil change, gas, um, tolls, any expenses that are coming because of your car, keep those. And when you tally up taxes for your Mary Kay business, they'll pull all the information and get it all for you. So that's the, that's kind of the two main deductions you want to be paying attention to. And you want to kind of have a notebook right from the start and you want to have your Mary Kay space right from the start. And then from there, you're going to have, um, we're going to go to the tax side and then we'll come back to the money management side. So since we got started on the whole home taxes and car taxes, pull up the document. If you've gotten it there, pull up the Mary Kay consultant worksheet with form fill copy <laughs> document. That is a mouthful. But when you pull that document up, there's a company called Accounting Unlimited, and they work with lots and lots of Mary Kay people for taxes. You don't have to work with them yourself, but they just kind of know our business. And so this is a, a resource that they've put together for us. So um, what that sheet is, is all the tax deductions you're allowed to take just because you're a Mary Kay girl. So some stuff on there you'll see makes sense. Cell phone. Um, you know, you'll see car and home expenses. Then some stuff is like, what, what is that? <laughs> so I want to kind of breeze you through the topics that they have so that you can understand. And what I did is I just took one drawer in my filing cabinet, or you could just get a file box, you know, just a plastic thing from Walmart or even a paper box and just some hanging file folders and you can just throw your receipts in each folder by category. You don't have to separate them out by month. You don't have to separate them out by anything, <laughs> just by the different categories for the receipts. So um, if you, you have it in front of you, Emily. Okay, good. I wanted to make sure before I started talking <laughs> that you could see it. Okay, so um, at the top, it says name, year, that's the tax year. Um, then the Mary Kay worksheet. And underneath it, you'll see total sales, including the tax. So when you add up your sales each week, you wanna include the tax in that so you can fill that out really easy. Um, then there's a line for commission and prizes. If you earn a lot of commission and prizes, Mary Kay will send you a form. A 1099, I believe, is the name of the form. So they'll send that to you. It will also be available on Mary Kay and Touch come mid to late January. Um, then underneath that, you've got your beginning inventory. That would be the beginning of this year, what you had on your shelf. 
Or if you've started your business this year, which most people watching this, this is their first year of business. So whatever inventory is your first order, boom. What is the wholesale amount, the consultant price amount that you're gonna have? So that's how you started your year. Underneath that, you'll see the section one purchases. That would be any and all wholesale product you order throughout the year. And so the easiest way to get that number is to keep your packing slips. You'll see in parentheses there, it says, you can go see her. You can go see her, the door's open. You'll see um, your cost from packing slips. There's actually four of these categories that are all on the packing slip. So I'll point those out. Okay. Um, so, uh, so section one purchases, that's going to be wholesale. When you see like section one wholesale, it's the stuff you sell. Um, and you're going to get that off your packing slip. The next one down personal use product, that would be products that you're using yourself that people can't see. So the skincare, nobody can see it. The Mm, primer, foundation primer, body wash, lotion, satin hands or lips, those products you just want to keep track of what you use because it's a tax deduction. You get to write off all those things that you, I'm sorry, the personal use product that you can't see is not a tax deduction. So they want to separate that out, but all the stuff that people can see, the foundation, the makeup, that all you don't have to track because that is just a tax deduction. It's advertisement, basically. Um, so just keep track of the products that you um, wear that you can't see. And one way to do that is just take an ordering sheet and just put a tash mark whenever you take something off your shelf. Easy peasy. Um, okay, so then closing inventory. When you wrap up the year, you'll take a closing inventory and you'll get like 15 emails from me coming up in the next week saying, don't forget to take your closing inventory. Um, so you know how much product you started the year with and then how much product you end the year with. And that again is gonna be key for knowing what your profit and loss was and all that. Um, then advertising, that would be like the preferred customer program or if you ever spend money on like putting word out there. Um, I don't do this, but if you were like buying an ad on Facebook or something, anything like that. Um, insurance on Mary Kay product, if you do put that on a loan or some, or not a loan, um, put a, what's it called when you have a policy? That's the word. If you had a policy, um, interest on a loan or credit card, if you have inventory and you do accrue interest, that would be all tax deductible. Obviously, we try not to make that the case. Um, dry cleaning. Legal and professional, that would be like an accountant. If somebody helps you with accounting or books of some sort like that. Weekly meeting fees, supplies, that's office supplies, stuff to run your office. Uh, here's the second one that you're gonna find on your packing slip, sales tax. So the amount of sales tax that you pay out all year will be just the sum of each of your orders combined. It's 935 times 20 orders or however many it is. So. Um, you don't need a separate file for that. You can staple your packing slips together every time they come and just drop them in a folder. That's what I do to this day. Grab them, staple, put it in the folder. Um, let's see, travel expenses, meals and food, bank charges on a Mary Kay account, propay fees. They give you a, a list of those at the end of the year also that you can print if you do propay or another thing like that dues publication so let's say you started getting the, the success magazine um or some beauty magazine and it cost money that would be considered a tax deduction growing your skills um postage here's the third one from your packing slips freight that is um oh my gosh i totally messed up a minute ago the sales tax is not nine dollars it's you know the percentage of your order Freight is the shipping, the 935, forgive me. And then the fourth one is right there, section two, that also is listed on your packing sleeve. Those are the supplies and the sales aids that you order. So you just wanna keep any receipts that apply to these things so that at the end of the year, you can tally them up and you have your numbers. And then the other things on here are more personal expenses. And so um, 
um, a cell phone, internet access, your car expenses and your housing and stuff, go ahead and just train yourself to keep those um, receipts. Another thing you can do is um, scan them into the computer and throw them away. You just have to have a record of those receipts. Um, I personally like to use Dropbox on my phone. I um, open up the Dropbox app and I can scan and I just scan the receipt and then I give it a title by whichever category it was. I can throw the receipt away. Um, so up to you, whatever like seems simple, but I'm kind of like minimizing the paper around here. <laughs> so that's the tax stuff. And um, like I said, Accounting Unlimited is a great resource. There's a lot of people out there who can help. Um, if you need support with taxes, I can send you somewhere. But that gives you a pretty good overview. Any questions? Okay, cool. So let's move to the money management side. And so the second document that I emailed you was the money management document. It's called money management. Um, and the front of that, it kind of is a wordy description of how to do your money. If you want to grab a plain sheet of paper or flip your page to the back side of that, just draw a line down the center of the page so you have two long columns. And I will teach you how to manage the money in a very simple chart. So uh, at the top of the page um, of each column, you're going to have uh, one is a checking account, one is a savings account. Most banks, you can open a personal checking pretty much for free. Um, you should be able to, or if you have a random account that you're not using, it just cannot mix with your personal funds because of the tax deductions. If your business is running in and out of your personal funds, A, it's really hard to sort it out. Where did the money go? Did I spend it on the right stuff? B, the hubby shouldn't see all the out stuff. If you ever have, he should see deposits only. <laughs> you know, they're happy if they see a hundred dollars here and a thousand dollars there. And, and that just works better because they don't always understand the different things we may invest a little bit of money in for our business. Um, and then thirdly, it helps to, well, it, it just allows you those tax deductions and it helps keep things straight. So um, a checking and a savings. Um, typically, you're going to make the checking account your profit account. So if you want to title that column profit, the checking account is profit, and that's where you're going to make your deposits. So you're depositing money into your profit account, your checking, and then what you're going to do is immediately transfer 60% into savings. So when that 60% goes over into savings, now that's your savings account for orders. You'll be able to reorder what you sold. You'll cover shipping, you'll cover, cover samples and any of that little stuff that you need from the company. And the magic is a 60-40 split will allow you not to, um, not to constantly be spending your profit, but also not to deplete your store because that's frustrating. So 60% should cover. So you only use that savings account when you place orders. So if your account's really full, you're probably getting ready to order. If your account is like empty, you probably just ordered. <laughs> and so that count is very like extreme. The checking account then is where you're going to make transfers into your personal bank account. So that 40% sitting there, you may leave a little bit in there in case you need to buy headbands or you go on a, a, a retreat or something like that. Um, it might be beneficial to save 20 bucks a month for those little things, but the rest of the money you're going to transfer into your personal account. And that will keep things clear and that will keep you organized and you'll know that you have the product that you need, but you'll also know what's your money because that's the point. It's a business we invest. Yes, but we need to make some money and we need to make it regularly. <laughs> So make sure that you're not always reinvesting back into your business. Make sure that hubby sees those little things or, hey, babe, I put 25 bucks in there. Let's go out to dinner. Something <laughs> um, that can, can help with that. So the other things to think about are ProPay, 
and PayPal and Zen or Venmo and Zelle and Facebook Pay. There are so many forms of sending money, Apple Pay. Just make sure those all get linked to your checking, your profit. And then when you make that transfer in or when the people pay you, just then move the 60% over and then transfer what you want as profit to your family. So that will kind of keep it all running smooth and seamlessly. Any questions on that? Okay. There's obviously a lot more levels we can take that to. I now have a budget for my business and I, you know, allocate money, but that's been over time figuring out how much I'm doing and the things that I know are coming up that I want to save for and, and things like that. Um, so there is a 201 and a 301 level as you move forward, but that gets you started and organized. So one big to do would be if you don't have your bank accounts yet, make sure and get those opened and then start training yourself to deposit, transfer, transfer, deposit, transfer, transfer. Um, whatever works for you. I like to do uh, once a week, my banking. So on Sundays in the afternoons, I sit down, I do all our receipts, pay our bills, and I look at my account and I go, okay, there's this much in, in there that I deposited. Let me move this, let me move this, done. <laughs> so it's not building up all the time and taking okay. forever. I can do it in like 30 minutes or less. So that is the money side of organization getting that in order. Um, let me think. So we talked about um, the main, you know, additional things that I use for my business, obviously, is my computer and my printer. Having access to print is huge. Um, a stapler, <laughs> because I'm stapling my weekly accomplishment sheets that we will talk about later. Um, my sales slips, you know, all of those things, staples are required. Uh, pens and pencils and um, uh, then packing materials. Uh, if you work with people out of town, you know, picking up some packs of mailers and things can be handy. I don't have to buy them monthly, but they're good. Or sending sample packs out. So that kind of gets you basic opportunities to organize. And so for those of you who are brand, brand new, I want to encourage you to take a, a night or a couple hours on Saturday, get your Mary Kay space in place. Where is it? What is that space? Get a little bit of order to it. Um, and then make sure you get to the bank, get those accounts set up. And if you have questions about, okay, how exactly do I run this? Let me know. I'll be happy to help explain how you make those transfers and how you know that what money goes where, but you may, I'm sure many of you are like, got it. I know how to do my money. So, um, so, but along the way, that's something I want, I want to have very good open communication about is, are you feeling equipped to make some profit? And is that money making it to your family? Do not miss that. Even if it's small or little bits, that's crucial. Like we talked about, hubbies should only see deposits. Uh, makes life better. So, um, so let's go to then the other document that is the emotional cycle. And that one's sideways. Let me see if I can get mine straight up. Um, hmm, that's interesting. Mommy. Mommy. Oops, not 9%, 90. Okay, well, we won't, I'm not gonna stress about it, but we'll, uh, I'll be able to see enough. So one of the things that we're gonna talk about in the four classes is the emotional cycle. And it's not just a Mary Kay thing. <laughs> it is life, it is parenting, it is marriage, it's jobs, it's health. We just work this cycle and um, the, the challenge is just getting through the cycle as quickly as we can. And I've heard it said many, many times that the women who are very successful in anything, but for our world in Mary Kay, they just get through the cycle faster. It doesn't take them a month. It takes them a day or maybe an hour. Um, and, um, if I can, if I can encourage you anything, 
is to totally buy in and believe that, that challenges and disappointments are not a sign that you shouldn't do this. It's a sign that you are a human being and that God loves you and wants you to grow. Uh, man, that has been a hard lesson for me. I'm not going to lie. I really would, ugh, every time bad things happened, or, and I don't even mean like attack or anything. I just mean like frustrations, cancellations, struggle, you know, feeling discouraged. Every time it happened, I'd be like, oh my, and just horrified. And it was like, I was trying to have this perfect thing, but like, what else in my life is perfect? Nothing. And so learning in that first couple of years, as I built my business, that disappointments and challenges are opportunities. They genuinely are that they make me better. And now my mantra is I can do hard things. I want to do hard things because it makes me better. I don't always feel that, but I say it <laughs> daily. So I, I want to encourage you, like, that's my job is to be a partner with you in that journey. The ups, the downs, the highs, the lows, the questions, the confidence, like whatever, let's do it together. I've felt them all. I have been ready to quit and I have been like, this is the best thing ever over and over and over through my journey, but many, many more good moments than bad. I promise. Um, much, much more. And especially the more that I've gone, Oh, okay. It's going to happen. It's okay. So the emotional cycle is just kind of a process that we can go through. And so you may see, where are you at in that right now? And you may see, Oh, that's what that was last month or, or whatever. So the first in the, in the cycle, the first stage is excitement and enthusiasm. We are like, this is going to be awesome. I love this. Oh my gosh. We make 50%. This is so cool. There's all these women who need what I have. And then step two is frustration. Uh, maybe you get cold responses or people put, put you off or, you know, just things aren't going right. The third stage that moves you into usually is shock. Like, this was supposed to be easy. Like they said this product sells and it's not, or women want to be together, but why doesn't anyone want to be with me? You, you can just go with so many directions in that shock, which leads to for denial. You know what? My life is good as it is. You know what? I, I like my job. It's fine. Everybody works a job. Most people work jobs. They work nine to five. It's fine. Or everybody has debt. You know, nobody has a lot of money. It's selfish to want a lot of money, whatever. Like so many things, you want that. Um, so many things that can happen at that point. Um, a lot of times we start to withdraw. We start to be like, my leader doesn't know what she's talking about. <laughs> my leader has drunk the Kool-Aid. She is trying to tell me things that aren't true. Uh, I've been there, done that too many times. Um, and you just want to pull away and just be like, whatever. She doesn't know my life. She is a crazy person. She doesn't have values and priorities. I don't know, all kinds of things. Um, that leads to fear a lot of the times. Like um, maybe I just have a problem. <laughs> maybe I'm not cut out for this. Maybe I'm not someone people like. Maybe I don't know how to sell. Like we just immediately after that start to like attack ourselves and lose our own confidence. Um, and then that leads after that fear and being there for a little bit, you hit 6A and 6B, commitment or derailment. No, no, please don't pull on that. I don't want it to spill. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, so derailment is they quit. You walk away. You say, I am not doing this. Um, commitment is really recommitment. It's saying, you know what? No, I am not letting those people who don't get it ruin my dreams and stop me. I'm not going to let other people stop me and take, steal my dreams anymore. All right. What do I need to do? What do I need to learn? And, um, and then we get back to excitement. Yeah. Oh, I totally misread that, but you guys get, you get it. <laughs> you get it what I'm saying. Um, and those cycles are normal. We all, no matter what level we hit frustration, we have letdowns and disappointments, but, um, the power is in not losing sight of the big picture. Like, why am I really here? I also believe more than I ever have that it also comes from a genuine appreciation of the doing. Like, this is not meant to be, what does it take to make money? 
or what will it take to get me out of debt? I'll do it. This is a, you know what? I really want to serve people and everyone might not get it, but I really think spending time with women and helping them is something valuable. So I'm going to stay there. I'm going to hold on to that. I'm not just going to walk away because it didn't work the first time I tried or, or whatever. Um, been, been at all the places with that. <laughs> and, um, and for me, that's what I've learned. But what I've learned the most is that re, a recommitted person is more powerful than an initially committed person. When you've walked that cycle and you've stepped back in, you are 10 times more powerful than somebody who is still in the honeymoon. <laughs> and wouldn't we say that with our kid, with our husbands? Like, yeah, it was awesome when we fell in love and that was really special and neat. But man, after doing life and making some mistakes and like fighting or getting off, and then we have that talk and we come back together, ah, there's this like power and strength that it builds. The mess is what builds the strength. And so I really believe that. And I'm grateful that Mary Kay gives you a safe place to do that. Like nobody's going to bash you <laughs> or you want more. Okay. No one's going to bash you or tear you down or get annoyed with you if you're in that process. The only thing that I know we as leaders like is communication. <laughs> so we know where you're at and, and how to partner with you. And if you need space, to let you have that space. Um, but my encouragement would be continue to value the base level. What, it, what is the doing here? What am I doing? Keep, keep up with who you are and what you love about what we do and then work through those challenges ask the questions think about about it in a different way and you'll make progress you'll make a lot of progress so um so i hope that's an encouragement and if you haven't been there yet it'll come to mind when the time comes <laughs> so um so that's emotional management and the cycle there um, and just to finish, because we'll talk more in depth in the coming weeks about, about these topics, but I really believe part, a huge part of emotional management in Mary Kay is your time management and your money management. And so our time is, is emotional, right? Like what we think we should be doing affects us emotionally. If we don't feel like we're with the people or we're letting someone down now it's emotional and it was all of our, our time and so as you walk on this journey give yourself space to figure it out but also be very vigilant about okay what am i doing how am i spending my time am i guilting myself or am i being intentional here and the more that you can take hold of your time and when you're going to do mary Kay, do it and when you're not don't and just doing it and getting done takes away so much emotion, which then allows you to be more positive and it allows you to see the, the positives. I have let Mary Kay take over my life. I have lived in guilt. I have lived in reaction and it was all terrible. <laughs> but the more that I have given myself some clear boundaries and clear things to just do this, don't do this, get done, go on, be present, be where my feet are, it's gotten a lot easier. So we'll talk more about time and all that stuff as we go, but I hope that gives you just a few things to think on and, and ponder on. Emotionally, is, your emotion is going to be highly impacted by your time choices and also by money, making sure that there's some money showing up um, in the bank account. So any questions before we end, Miss Emily, is there anything you wanted to ask about or anything you want me to circle back to? Nope, I'm good. Okay. Well, if any of the to-dos, the bank account organization, if any of those you hadn't done yet, let me know as you get them done and as you have any, if you have any hiccups, um, I would love to hear. And then next week, we're going to be talking about um, ways to reach out to people in your world, different avenues and angles for um, just connecting, for creating opportunities to serve, and kind of what that all looks like. So that'll be a big part for next week is um, building the relationships, connecting, creating those opportunities, kind of how to do all that, how to manage it well. 
Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, have a great evening.